Hey everybody, welcome to What About The Game. Today I'm going to be talking about Alpha Mission 2 on the Nintendo Switch. Before being renowned worldwide for their Neo Geo MVS unit, SNK were fairly productive on home consoles of the time, as well as standalone arcade games free of the Neo Geo name. One of their mid-90s efforts was a vertical shooter, Alpha Mission, which appeared first in arcades and soon landed on the increasingly popular Famicom and NES. Its sequel, Alpha Mission 2, appeared six years later as one of the very early titles for the MVS and on a system hugely dominated by 2D fighters. A vertical scrolling shooter was very welcome for variety's sake, but was it any good? Let's find out. Now if you follow my reviews you'll know that I'm not exactly an authority on the genre. While I like them as a concept and would love to play them well, in actuality I'm a complete scrub. I generally like the patience to learn patterns and know when to hold back. I'm the kind of guy who just enjoys blowing stuff up, charging headfirst into battle. Maybe I'm not the best person to review Alpha Mission 2, but bear with me as I'm sure I'm not the only one coming from my perspective. As a shooter, there's not much to be said for the general gameplay, it's very standard for the genre. The closest thing it does to being different is shooting enemies above and dropping missiles on enemies below, as though there are two planes of play. It's something that has been done before way back in Xevious, which is probably the most comparable game. Personally, while I found Xevious a challenging game, it is just too slow. Thankfully, it isn't mirrored here. Alpha Mission 2 has a nice pace to it when you've powered up your ship just a little. Where most games differentiate is in the weapon and power-up systems. Uh, Alpha Mission 2 doesn't break any new grounds in this regard. In fact, some may brand it as a rather generic example of a shooter. Blue power-up cubes fall from the top, which need to be shot in order to release the power-up inside. Initially, the power-up is marked S, which indicates a speed increase. If you shoot it one more time, it will juggle back to the top of the screen and become an L, which increases your laser firepower. Hit it again, and it will become an M, which increases your missiles. Hit it a final time and it will become a G, which while not a power-up, gives you some money to trade at the end of the stage. Everything can be upgraded up to four times, but be warned, once you get to this point, the power-ups will suddenly turn purple and become powered downs. While this part seems fairly simple, Alpha Mission 2 does throw all of these at you at once, and it can quickly turn messy as you try to change the speed to a laser while dodging enemy fire. Alpha Mission 2's main gimmick is in its armor power-ups, which, while do offer protection, should be more aptly named Special Weapons. This is probably the most confusing aspect of the game, as you collect three pieces of the same armor to then press C to equip it. There are apparently 11 in total, but even after a few hours worth of play, I didn't see them all. Most disappointingly for me is just how brief their longevity is. Each armor power-up has an energy meter that drains almost in an instant. Yes, it makes them a more precious commodity that should be used in more tricky places, but I would have liked them to have lasted longer because that's when the game is the most fun. Additionally, the previously mentioned money pickups can be used to buy these armor power-ups between stages. Like any shooter worth its salt, Alpha Mission 2 contains its fair share of boss battles and mini-bosses. Naturally, they pack quite a challenge and their patterns must be learned in order to not get slaughtered. There are six full stages in total, followed by a final boss battle, which makes it not the longest game in the world, probably completable in an hour or less. As an arcade game though, it's about mastering it and achieving the highest score. Much to my annoyance, it's a one-hit death kind of shooter. As a personal preference, due to my lack of skill, I always prefer a health bar, and it's a shame for me personally that it doesn't have one here. Yes, the armor power-ups can allow you to survive a hit, but it's not that helpful in the grand scheme of things. It may not come as a surprise to you, but I generally don't like dying in games, especially shooters where, as a staple, dying means losing all of your power-ups. Dying while fully powered up can be soul-destroying and makes recovering very difficult. Of course, in this port from Hamster, dying shouldn't be an issue as you can put in as many credits and lives as you please, but that doesn't stop the feeling like you're cheating to get through the game. Thankfully, the first five stages are pretty bearable on the lowest difficulty after a bit of practice, but the final stage and final boss are just incredibly biased towards grabbing your money. Of course, with a bit of patience and learning, highly skilled players should be able to do it. As with the previous hamster ports, they've done an excellent job, especially including all of the available options to customize your game as much as you want, right from the controls, which the faster auto fire is a godsend to my controller and thumbs, uh, the screen filters, to how many lives you have, you can really make it as fun as you want to suit your style of play. 
Me personally, of course, I notched the difficulty down a level or two, just so I could sit back and enjoy a more balanced game that doesn't want to take all your money. Included in the various options is the ability to set the switch screen in a vertical perspective. Sadly, the aspect ratio of the game doesn't change, so you can't use the whole length of the switch screen. Considering the original game was never designed this way, it's impossible to see it as a negative, but one could have dreamt. For a 1991 release, Alpha Mission 2 looks pretty swell for its time. At first glance it looks on par visually with the console games at the time, but it's the detail that gives away the power of the system. It's not pushing the system's limits for sure, but some of the effects and sprite details are gorgeous. Where the game really packs a punch is in the sound design, with some really awesome music tracks and effects. One of my favourite aspects is the two player option, where you play through the game together. Unsurprisingly, it can make the game easier, but on the other hand, it can be awesomely chaotic as you fight for the different power-ups and blame each other for dying. It's just the perfect fit for the Switch too. The Joy-Con's versatility as a single controller or two is just genius and makes multiplayer for Alpha Mission 2 excellent either in the home or in your local coffee shop of choice. Additionally, like all of Hamster's arcade archive series, you can choose either the Japanese original or the international release as well as the high score mode where you have one credit to get the highest score possible, plus the caravan mode, which gives you 5 minutes to get a high score. Like the previous Neo Geo titles that I've reviewed, I'm not entirely convinced of this mode, but I guess it suits Alpha Mission 2 the most so far. Overall, Alpha Mission 2 is an excellent download title for your console of choice. As a new system, it serves a nice genre filler for Switch owners especially, and the portability and multiplayer versatility of it just completely sells it to me as the preferred system of choice. Hamster's excellent porting job and the options available just make it as user friendly as it can be, even for shooter idiots like myself. While Alpha Mission 2 may not be the pinnacle of the genre, it's still a nice game to own. Okay guys, if you've enjoyed this video, then be sure to like and subscribe, that will help me out. You can read the full review of Alpha Mission 2 at whataboutthegame.com, and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to. All the links are below. Thanks guys, bye bye.